Ah, oh, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. You're, you're in the right place. Stay right there. This is Wednesday, and if it's Wednesday, obviously, it's catching up with Kaka'ako Day. Correct. That's what Wednesday is about, at least until 4 o'clock when we catch up with Energy Day. Oh. <laughs> it's a big day on Think Tech. Anyway, so uh, today we do at 3 to 4 our Catching Up with Kaka'ako program. Today we're talking about, and it probably will expand beyond whatever I say, uh, architectural concepts concepts in play with regard to the public spaces in Kaka'ako. But that's probably a too brief a description, too narrow a description. With Scott Wilson, an architect, an active member of the AIA Honolulu, and the chair of the Urban Design Committee, and what, the president-elect, actually, for next year. That's right, correct. And a guy who really cares about the city and about Kaka'ako, which is kind of the, the symbol of the city these days, don't you think? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it, it's, a con it's a tricky concept because we're dealing with a new kind of city. So it's not like I can say, hey, it's got to turn out exactly like this part of our city, because it's not. It, it's going to be a new kind of urban Honolulu, a new kind of neighborhood. Well, you know, just to, to sort of come at this in a circumspect fashion, you know, we had this thing, I think you were there uh, at uh, the legislature uh, oh, yeah. in the yeah. Capitol, um, uh, Capitol uh, Auditorium, okay. and we invited the, the gubernatorial candidates mm -hmm. and then ultimately the lieutenant gubernatorial candidate to attend. Um, and it was, you know, it was, a, it was a very interesting discussion, but, uh, you know, they, they talked a lot about homeless and not very much about architectural concept, which mm -hmm. I, I was disappointed because I wanted to hear more about, you know, the the planning aspect of things. Mm -hmm. uh, so we never really got close to it. And we, you know, and because the governor didn't show up, although there was a yeah. repeated rumor that he was upstairs on the fifth floor watching through the closed circuit TV. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, you know, I suspect. it was really available. Yeah. Um, he doesn't show up for all the, all the uh, debates that, he, uh, that he's invited to. Um, you know, we did, we did touch on some things that were important. Uh, and it, you know, it seems to me that, let's put it into perspective again, uh, is, that, is that, well, go back, Paul Brubaker, uh, mm -hmm. an economist, right. wrote me a note that morning, and he said, you must tell them housing is the most important thing, and we, are, we, are, we don't have enough housing in the state, and it's all about housing, we've got to focus on housing, and Kaka'ako is the place for housing, you know, get it. And why don't you mention that? I said, well, if you feel that way, why don't you mention it? But he didn't come. Mm -hmm. He said he was off island or something, so we never yeah. really got to that. But there's, there's the, you know, the kind of ramp up issue. Um, isn't this, this is a rhetorical question to which I already know the answer. Isn't this all about housing, Scott? It, it is, and I don't, I, don't, I don't argue the housing point at all, but housing is, a, is just is a, is a mental concept, right? And, it, and it, yes, it has, there are certain kinds of housing. There's big, small, cheap, expensive, and so forth. But what I think the AIA is really concerned at is that let's talk about the physical spaces, the physical neighborhoods, the tangible spaces that we are going to be ending up in. Because we don't just want housing. We don't just want a thousand foot tower with 800 units in it. That's, that's no life, right? So, yeah. so what we're trying to do is push this discussion beyond affordability and housing and parks, which are just grand concepts. You know, we all, there are motherhood and apple pie. We, we can all go with that. We want to get down to the brass tacks. The, we've got to be able to, to speak the language of a developer. He's the, he's the guy, or he's, she's the guy uh, who's, who's actually building these things, who's making the final decisions on where, where does this building sit, What's in front of it? Does it have stores? Does it, is it just a blank wall? Uh, and that kind of but, thing. But here's the thing on housing. When, when Paul Rubick or any, any economist, uh, I'm sure you could find the same statement coming out of other economists at UHERO at the university. Mm -hmm. um, when they talk about housing, they're talking about housing for the people of Hawaii. I mean, otherwise. Yeah. Affordable. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's got to be. The only community issue there is housing for the people of Hawaii. It's got to match the median income or plus minus 10, 20 percent. But I, I agree, um, you know, this is, this is definitely an issue that we shouldn't take off the table. There, don't just build the luxury housing uh, of the $1 million plus apartments that are all fronting uh, Alamoana Boulevard. But I think, 
I think the developers and the HCDA have gotten that message. There, it, it's not getting all the publicity, but there are lower, uh, smaller towers coming up on the interior portions of Kakako, and you know, I urge you just to drive around there. You'd be surprised how many have been built. And yeah, yeah, right. Well, why I, are we? I, you know, why they, are we they, have this conversation. They're yeah. building, actually. You know, the, and they're kind of noticeable because the luxury towers tend to be glass skinned and you know, sleek designs. The affordable housing tends to be the boxy rectangular units. Uh, I mean, I think anybody who's looked compared the two, you know, you can see type A, type B. They're pretty obvious. But at least we have the type B. You know, that's we're well, making progress. Obviously, as architects, we'd like to see those type B units come out looking nicer, uh, more more lanai's, more glass, and so forth. But you know, if this was happening in China, mm. you know, I mean, we run China down about the way they build things, but yeah. if this was happening in China, and it has happened in China on many occasions, and it is happening in China, there would be a mock-up of the whole neighborhood, okay, and everything would be laid up, mm. laid out on this mock-up. It would mm -hmm. be a model and all, and you would see exactly how things fit. W yeah. you know, where are the apartments? Where are the schools? Where is the shopping? Where are the roads? Mm -hmm. You can see the whole thing, and you can see that it was integrated. That yeah. It wasn't just you know, hey, I want to do what I want to do on that lot, and he wants to do what he wants to do on that lot, you know, and then we, we each try to get the government to agree mm -hmm. to our vision, but the government the government is only looking at it in a silo, not, not really as mm -hmm. a whole. Anyway, so... You know, China is a central uh, authoritarian government. Well, sometimes and, that works. And, you know, for town planning, I think that you can't beat it. Unfortunately, you know, Kakako has a has a planning agency but there's hundreds of landowners within that agency and in our particular system of government and laws uh, we cannot tell every landowner you will build that tower there you know that's not going to happen no but honestly maybe it should yeah <laughs> there's a little part of every master planner that says Damn, I would really love to have that authority, yeah. you know, and make this a great project yeah. and, and it's all integrated because a lot of the problems that we're discussing, you know, today and in the past are because of lack of integration. Yeah, and yeah. he goes that way and he goes that way and yeah. everybody says, oh, I got a beautiful project. Mm. It's in the mind of the beholder, though, mm -hmm. you know. Anyway, so the design committee is going to look at this. It has some yeah. preliminary thoughts, not formalized or anything. Mm -hmm. And you had a vision, uh, a vision meeting uh, what, about a month ago, I think. Yeah. Um, and um, um, you know, the the architects are coming out on this. They're okay. thinking in public. We just think that there is no there is no organization uh, within within the city that is really proactively looking at the overall design for the public interest. Mm -hmm. I mean, we. We had, normally we have a department of planning uh, and they handle the rest of the city, but the Kakako is a special case and it's only being looked at by the uh, development authority, which right there in the title alone get, gives you an indication there's a little bit of a conflict because they're, rather than being a planning authority, they are Hawaii Community Development Authority. Right, and with a track record that's kind of... Yeah. You know, questionable. Yeah, they, so it, they had 30 years to develop it and they haven't done anything. It, structurally, now it's a big the, rush. the situation is now it's getting to be a problem because, I mean, they, for 30 years they developed the infrastructure and we were all ignoring them and they did a fine job. Did and they? I mean, still now today. I, be, I believe, I mean, I know that. There are, uh, that we keep hearing rumors that, you know, infrastructure is inadequate, but I, uh, it, the best of my knowledge, um, the infrastructure is there. They have been planning for 30,000 new residents in Kakako and the, the sewers and the power and you know uh, are, are in there, are on the ground. Uh, we can't see them, but it's, it's there. So I, I really think we should move beyond that big question about, oh, you know, well, is what sewer... questions should we go to, Scott? I mean, from an architect's point of view, from a planner's point of view, mm -hmm. how do we make this the right thing? And mm -hmm. of course, I, I should ask you first, what is the right thing? And when I when I ask you this question, which pops up in my mind, just yeah. just for context, is three four years ago I went to Florence, okay, okay? and uh, near the Duomo, mm -hmm. you know, in the center there, yeah. uh, there's a little alley, and the alley goes back a few blocks, and it's narrow, twisted streets, you know, and all the buildings are of the same 
kind of architecture, very pleasing yeah. for a human scale architecture. And then all of a sudden you pop out into a, a, a plaza, mm -hmm. a, a park. And the park is probably way bigger than Mother Waldron Park. Mm -hmm. And it's got lots of green grass and it's well maintained. In other words, not like we have, you know, because we don't have well maintained. We haven't had well maintained parks since I can remember, really. Um, and it's got these very exotic, uh, modern, modern architecture, modern architecture design benches. Okay, mm. and the benches are beautiful benches. I mean, you love to sit on benches like mm. this. They're concrete and they're shaped, mm. and they're, they're they're low, not high. Mm. You know, very comfortable. In other words, they're not worried that somebody might sleep there. They're not mm. worried about mm. that. You know. Um, and there's pathways through the park, and around the park, there are these old Florentine buildings, but also there are some retail, you know, some food mm -hmm. shops, Makes and a church or two. Always got to have a church or yeah. two. So it's got history, it's got modernity, uh, it's got commerce, it's got proximity to other things of interest. It is a beautiful, beautiful place to be. You could spend all day in a park like this, relaxing yourself and being happy to be alive kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, when, so when I ask you... <laughs> <laughs> that was, you know, that's a big mouthful. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, we yes, we want to create a great environment for people to relax, refresh themselves, you know, enjoy the Hawaiian weather. A, this is primary, is we have to never forget that we're in Hawaii. We have to expose people to the air, to the weather, to the views of the ocean, to access to the ocean, the mountains, the trade winds. But um, clearly, you know, history, we are in America, it's a country of uh, 200 to 50, 250 years old. We, we cannot be creating a Florence, which goes back about a thousand years at least. But we can create a great sustainable neighborhood in which you can live, walk, work, play uh, with very little use of a car. And, and it can be a vibrant place because it's got stores on, the, on every street. And, and they can be open all night or you know late at night. So it, it can be an urban neighborhood, something like a cross between, like I said, Chinatown and Waikiki. You know, it, it's vibrant. It, it can have modern stores. Uh, it can have traditional stores, uh, uh, grocery stores, everything you need. And um, that kind of, I think that's a very real vision and it, and it is been it has been expressed by the HCDA so I have no problem with their vision what they've written in their plans it's just getting it built okay, Get but, no but there are problems in design okay mm -hmm. and there are problems that pop up when you yeah. take a look at it mm -hmm. when you check out the last project that's been announced yeah you say oh this isn't exactly what we had in mind yeah. and something is being eaten at the edges in my mm -hmm. term yeah, uh, but what what do you see happening? What are you concerned about from an architectural, planning, aesthetic, you know, live, work, learn, and play kind of? Point yeah. Of view? Well, I mean, okay. I think there needs to be some tweaking of the design, the overall design. I, as I told you before the show, the connection between the Mauka Kakako Mauka Kakako Makai is not strong right now. There's a there's the the HCDA has not said a word about how are we going to get the thirty thousand people in the Malka section to enjoy the parks, which are all over on the Makai section. So that's, that's a tweaking of the design. Their overall vision, like I said, an well, urban let's neighborhood go is good, but we definitely got to have to Let's uh, talk about the Malka Makai. Polish that. Malka Makai can be a death knell. Look what happened to Aloha Tower. Yeah. The one piece of the you know, South Street Seaport walkway mm. that would go presumably from downtown to Waikiki through our best beachfront in the state, yeah. maybe some of the best beachfront in the world, um, and, and it's like dead. Now we have a university moving dormitories in there, Kid, yeah. are you kidding me? Um, that's not exactly what we had when we mm -hmm. tried to emulate South Street Seaport. Yeah. Um, and, and the failure, of course, was the inability um, to do the Malcolm Mackay. Mm -hmm. a downtown with, um, I don't know, 100,000 people more that work there every day, they don't cross Al Moana. And nobody with all those college degrees and planning degrees and whatnot yeah. could figure out a way to bridge the gap and it killed the project. Yeah. I think you could say that. Yeah. Well, let's, So what, what are we gonna do now? Yeah, so now now we've got a really a serious issue because to, to make Kakako Malka 
a really workable neighborhood that's attractive, we've got to get people to the parks, right? There's plenty we of got to start the parks exploring. Now, you know. What? Take there, a ride. The, uh, that's uh, you're right. There's a different type of people in yeah. tents and so forth. And and uh, and just as an aside, we have a homeless problem, but don't blame it on Kakako. I unfortunately I felt like homelessness kept coming up in our in oh, our talk. I agree talk. with you, and I didn't I didn't and, really want that. We, yeah, the whole thing was like hijacked by homelessness. Yeah, but the, but the, and then I went for a ride afterward, and I looked myself oh. to see what was going on, and, and yeah. there are hundreds, if not thousands, of homeless there. Yeah. There's a huge city of homeless. I yeah. mean, I've been there on a regular it's, basis for years. I go, I always want to take a look and sort of smell the roses, but but what's what's happening there now is, is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are so many people and children living mm -hmm. everywhere in Kakako, yeah. and you say to yourself, what is the difference between this jurisdiction, you know, and say Thomas Square? Okay? Yeah. Well, the city uh, rolls this up its city, sleeves and this moves is, them around. Kakako is, is is administered by a state agency Which that doesn't does, move does around. not have a, 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 the grand array of agencies under its control. It doesn't have a police force, a, a fire, you know, a fire force, any of that. So, but let's not get too involved. No, no, I agree. But but yes, how there's there's really two two ways of connecting. You know, Malcolm Mackay. One is. You, you put in these grand bridges and you have people wandering over bridges and, and as we have throughout the city. Uh, maybe they can be more sculptural and, and elegant and so forth. Another solution yeah, is... Can to, I is, comment while you go through these or you want to comment? Yeah, let me, let me give you the other option. Okay, then please. we can... The other option is we have to deal with all the Moana Nimitz. You know, A, we can modify it into a boulevard on the ground B, we can sink it. It can be, we can be gone. If you look at how uh, H1 is sunk under Punahou Street, uh, it saved that whole hospital corner. That, that hospital was there from the 50s, and they, they chose in their wisdom to sink H1 rather than, than uh, run, a ho you know, run a freeway right next to a hospital. Mm -hmm. And that was brilliant. And, and it allowed Punahou Street to just carry right over a very mm -hmm. busy street. So. Something like that can be worked out. Um, as I said, you can make it a boulevard and make it less intimidating. You can put in big, wide zebra crossings like in Waikiki or big, wide sidewalks that are just traditional sidewalks, uh, sorry, crosswalks. Um, so those kind of discussions need to be made. And which streets? Obviously, it has to be key streets that lead from Wather Waldron or lead down from uh, the cultural district along Ward and then down there. There's, those are the two connector streets that I, I see as pivotal. And there's, but it's a state highway and, and so the city, the state need to really cooperate and, and have, a, have a good discussion. They say they do. Mm -hmm. huh? But you know, right now there's no solution on uh, uh, mm -hmm. Aloha Tower. You know, oh, we, we could yeah. have a solution. I mean, even if mm -hmm. just for the benefit of the college kids, we could yeah. still have a solution. Yeah. And uh, in fact, let me offer this, Scott, we could have a solution um, to the park right now. If somebody built one, what are they waiting for? You know what this reminds me of? Hmm. The, the four-way stop signs. Yeah. I wrote a couple of pieces on this already, but it was like in the wind. You know, so, you know if Kaka'ako were, uh, you know, dismal industrial area, mm -hmm. four-way four stop signs would be appropriate mm -hmm. because there's no traffic. But yeah. Kaka'ako is changing. It's, it's in a yeah. transformation. Yeah. You know, whether these buildings are finished now, as you mentioned, a lot of them are mm -hmm. in, in, in the process. There's a lot of activity, traffic, what have you, going mm -hmm. on. Um, but, but, and I wrote my articles, why don't you put a traffic light up? You know, <laughs> I, I wind up, I don't know about you, on a list, on a, on a, a line of cars you know, five or six cars, mm -hmm. and they're all waiting for the other side of the traffic to move. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it takes a lot longer than it would if there was a traffic light. Yeah. That's what traffic lights are all about, to manage yeah. traffic. Yeah. So what's happening now is it's building up, building up, but nobody can spend. What's the cost to put traffic lights in mm -hmm. an intersection? It's peanuts. Mm -hmm. um, nobody can spend the money to put traffic lights there, even though it's obvious that the old model of four-way stop signs you know, yeah. is not working anymore. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, to go from there to the whole thing about Makai Malka, um, is is they could do something there. Yeah, I, I it, it it has to occur now, at early stages. It's this is 
this is sort of the ultimate irony is that we are now building the first of the luxury towers down there near the Ward Theaters, million dollar to twenty five million dollars for 50. those of you, fifty million. And oh. what are they looking down on? At, well, they're looking on an Alamona Park, but if they were to look a little bit to the uh, to the west, they're looking down on and whole communities of homeless. Um, it's it just shows the the disparity in our overall planning. You say irony. Uh, I guess you, irony <laughs> to say the least. That's an understatement. Yeah, yeah. But it, so so there's there's really two things that, that are really important in Kakako that should be addressed right now. The design one is our Malcolm Mackay connection. Two is we've got to again have a renewed emphasis on the the pedestrian streetscape, the walking environment. Is it really coming out the way? HCDA has have it has it in their vision. They they like to show a couple of pictures of you know nice little sidewalks with little cafes and, and outdoor tables and we've got uh, trees for shade and the and the buildings are close and they're all lined up so that there's shop after shop and it sounds great and then as soon as they announce a new project you start scratching your head and going wait what where happened? Happened? where are the details that you that you just showed us back at that prototype vision, I don't see them. You know, I, I'm really concerned with this latest uh, project uh, on um, on Alamona Boulevard near Cook Street, I believe it is, in which it's a luxury tower. It's on about a 50-foot high podium, and and from the the one rendering that I saw, which was from the beach side, there were just these 40-foot to 50-foot walls on Alamona and on the side street, on either side street, and so the thing was basically a, a gated community. It, it had no, it had some nice plantings, but if you're walking on that street, you, you're not, you're not engaging with that project at all. That's not an urban neighborhood. I mean, that, that, is, that is a piece of suburbia. That, that anyway. is a suburban gated community gone vertical, yeah. and it, and it's like, stay out. If you don't belong here, you're not an owner here. We don't want to see you. And just keep on walking, and you know we'll put some trees here to make it to soften that 50-foot wall. But that's it. Yeah, well, that's probably appropriate that, for a break. What yeah. You know, okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's do a break. You probably get too excited. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting. <laughs> we're getting. That's Scott Wilson, an architect, and he's the chair of the Urban Design Committee at AIA Honolulu, which is down the block. This is Think Tech Talks. We're catching up with Kakaaka as we do every Wednesday from 3 to 4 p.m talking today about architectural concepts in play in the public spaces in Kaka'ako to be. Uh, I'm Jay Fidel. We'll be right back. Stay there. Hello, I'm Martin Despang, and I'm the host, together with the one and only Ali Amashta, and our show is called Urban Transcendence. And Urban Transcendence is about identifying where we have a unique situation of a vibrant city in one of the most beautiful natural environments. So how these two can coincide, sometimes conflict, how they could find reciprocity in the 21st century is what we're excited about. And we're planning on bringing in uh, a diverse body of, of guests, both from the arts and the science and the established and the wise and the emerging generation. So hope you will join us. We'll always be on on Thursdays from 1 to 2 p.m. Thank you know, we've been thinking about doing longer breaks because we get so much good talk in during the breaks. It's like maybe we shouldn't have breaks, you know. <laughs> That's right. The best part is happening when we're off camera. Oh. That's Scott Wilson. He's an architect. Uh, I always wanted to be an architect. Uh, <laughs> too late, too late. Yeah, too late. And uh, he's the chair of the design committee, urban design committee, important committee in AIA Honolulu. And he's also the president-elect of um, AIA Honolulu. And today we're catching up on Kaka'ako. We're talking about the uh, architectural concepts and play in the public spaces in Kaka'ako. So very interesting. You make, a, during the break, you make a distinction between planning and architecture, uh, which is, you know, really interesting. And it reminds me of this whole notion is that architecture, and for that matter, planning, is communication. It's communication of the, the place, whatever it is, with the people. Mm -hmm. and, and because it's communication, because it's this interaction, this engagement with the public, uh, it defines our quality of life. You know, in the mm -hmm. 21st century, people live in little ticky-tack 
condos or small apartments, smaller than they should be, really. Um, and then, you know, they get out. And when they get out, that's their time to breathe, their mm -hmm. time for their spirits to breathe. Yeah. And if they walk into canyons of 40-foot walls, which don't care about them, which tell them no, you know, mm -hmm. the, the neighborhood that says no, kaka'ako, <laughs> it rhymes. Sorry to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, then, you know, that the, their lives are not nearly as pleasant as they could be. And this is a turning point. I told you about Michael, uh, what was his name, Himmelman, Kimmelman, mm -hmm. who spoke. Uh, yeah. He's the architectural critic for the New York Times and teaches at Yale about this kind of, wrote a book about this kind of thing where he talked about public spaces and how important they are today, but also kind of in a, in a resurrect, in a resurrectual sense, because there was a time in the history of humanity when public spaces were everything. Uh, many, many civilizations over the years understood this. Query, do we understand mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. We have sort of abandoned the most um, important thing in our lives, and that is how we, we as a community, as a civilization, engage together in public spaces. Anyway, so tell me more about the distinction you find between planning and architecture, how that works, and how that works in Kaka'ako. Yeah, well, getting back to planning and architecture. Planning, planning is, as you said, it's communication, but it's communication of principles and policies. You know, that's, that's the heart of, of, of most urban planning. Uh, it, we, we, have, we have a you know policies and principles in this country of equality, of access, equality of education. Um, and um, I think those, those policies have to be communicated in our buildings. And, and this is where we have to make the, the transition over to architecture because the final product is, is what is going to mold people's lives. And, as you say, if you're walking around in a neighborhood that says no, and, and to, to, to say this is possible, all you have to do is look at the Kakako, I'm sorry, the Ala Moana end of Kakako. You have a cluster of six high-rise luxury towers right in there. and Across the fire station. No, no this is oh, the near Ala Moana, yeah. Ala Moana Center. Well, we may have it on both sides then, yeah. Scott. Yeah, know, well, so maybe it's a sign of things to come. It, it, to know that it can it can get built if we're not vigilant that you just have to look at that super block of six towers when you're walking on those streets you are not welcome that is those are all private property they're walled off they they have no they have very few shops now i'll admit to you that that at the very extreme end on the ever end they have now got a panya and they've got a a, a little um, bistro and and there there are now some shops and i think they ha there has been an attempt to create more interface with it's the street. It's after the fact. Yeah, but the we need to really be vigilant that we can't just have a few token shops as they've done in that super block. Uh, that's not going to make a real urban neighborhood. Um, yeah. So, you know, how do you how do you integrate these? What did I call them? Uh, architectural and planning Con yeah. concepts, the ones that are mm -hmm. in play in developing what is the most interesting and important neighborhood the state has ever, mm -hmm. you know, built mm -hmm. or allowed to be built. Mm -hmm. How do you properly I incorporate these notions of, yes, yes, yeah. you belong here. Yes, we want you. We mm -hmm. want you to spend time here, be happy here, enjoy your life here. Come, come everyone. Yeah. Uh, how, do you, how do you include those notions? Well, I think the most important thing is, is we concentrate on the, on the public spaces, i.e. the streets and the sidewalks, and the and the streetscape, the scape that's lining on either side of the street, because that is open to everyone. You know, that's part of our American philosophy. We do not have private roads, private uh, communities other than you know suburban residential. But uh, we really need to concentrate on the details of these of these street fronts, and we need to really uh, make sure that all these new developments have a street front and have a an accessibility for people walking on along the sidewalk and yeah. this is this is this is where we in the past it has not been a detail that has been has been really rigorously adhered to well you know it and you can find many many neighborhoods in the world I mean among them yeah. would be neighborhoods in Florence sure. um, you know that are really human scale and mm -hmm. uh, uh, high a, a wonderful experience to be there kind of. yeah. um, but also you can find and you do find in many places in this country and for that matter in North America, 
you find towns and areas that have been designed and built all in the last few years mm -hmm. that wind up in the same place. Pleasant human scale. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody conceived of these these principles you're talking about and yeah. executed them, and yeah. um, and made those streets work the right way, and made the shops and the buildings work the right way. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's possible to do it both ends. We can learn from the past, and we can improve on the past. The new, I know, I think you're referring to the what they call the new urbanism. Uh, there are there has been a movement in the last 20 years to to go back basically to the town planning principles that we. Uh, we used until about 1930. There, the until 1930, American town planning was actually was state of the art, and it was human based. It was people based. It had grand principles. It put its government buildings at key axes. It, it laid out streets, and and it had everything was in within walking distance. And unfortunately, post World War II, we lost all of that in the rush to suburbia, the rush to accommodate our our new families after the war and and the engineers and the traffic engineers particularly just took over and started changing all of our standards all of our laws and and what we've had to do in the last 10 years I'd say is build a, what we call a form-based planning code and that's what Kakako uses so in the sense of their overall rules they are on the right place mm -hmm. they are on the right track but it, it's a big change. And Suppose it, I'm HCDA or a government planning agency and I say, look, um, first thing I'm going to do is I am going to build streets, you know, physical streets mm -hmm. or rebuild them that, that work for this kind of complete streets concept and mm. live, work, learn, and play. I'm going to go as far as I can go as a government entity yeah. first. That's the first thing. And then you guys, you know, you know where your land is. You build on your land and mm -hmm. subject to our rules and zoning and what mm -hmm. have you. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build this. So this goes back to the question of why can't we solve the Malcolm Akai issue now? Mm -hmm. Why can't we rebuild those streets now? Uh, now, I guess I'm really asking you from an architectural planning point of view, is that backward? Um, is what happens, at first you build the building, then you build the streets? Could you build the street first, then the building? No. Yeah. The you, you can put in your infrastructure, as they've done all the stuff underground, and that's fine. But you don't actually want to build out your perfect streets before the buildings, because with the construction that is involved in any one of these big sites, your streets will be totally trashed. You'll, you'll, have, an, you'll have build them twice. Mm. So, so basically, you all, what you see throughout the city is that when a big development occurs, that's when they widen the street, that's when they do the final sidewalk, they put in the trees. It's, it makes more sense. Okay. The, you, the improvements on a site need to come first before the, the final street. Okay, so then we should be talking about exactly what is permitted in the buildable areas. You know? Yeah. How much setback? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the physical, you know, view of the building. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if everybody in the place is paying multi-million dollars, that's one thing, but it should not impinge on the public spaces. It should right. not offend. It, sh it should not say no. Um, mm -hmm. So how in the world could we here in the land of the swaying palms mm -hmm. and, the, and the lost paradise, it's more lost all the time, I think, yeah. um, how could we allow a 40-foot wall in a residential neighborhood? Mm -hmm. It's hard, you know, from the point you were discussing about, you know, uh, good planning and trying to recapture the, the old way of planning, planning America. Yeah. Uh, how could we allow a 40-foot wall in a neighborhood that's supposed to be live, work, learn, and play residential? How could we do that? Yeah. How could we do that? Well, to me, to me, that that is, uh, they are they are granting too many variances from our rules because yeah, if you look at the rules for Cook Street or or Alamoana or or Awahi Street, which is the, some of the streets involved in this latest project, they have build two lines. They have uh, they have uh, commercial space requirements, but you have to remember that a lot of those projects that are coming up right now, uh, both with Kamehameha Schools and Howard Hughes, they were given preliminary approval in 2005. So it's an entitlement issue. So it's an entitlement. And they're going to claim this is no, we own this. And they we got approved they, and we they have made some 
comments about, well, we'll try as much as possible to match the 2011 rules, but we've been, we've been granted our, our master plan uh, approval. So it, when push comes to shove, we're going to do it our way. You know, and that's, that's, that's a problem. It's all about money. Yeah. No, that's a problem. It's not about the work, learn, and play. This is, so. this is a, a big issue, I and think. It's, it, we've got 29 projects which already have approval from the old rules, and yet they haven't been built. And yet we're going to allow them in the next 15 years to build using the old rules when we've already established a great new planning guideline for the rest of Kakako. We, so we, we mean HCDA. HCDA. With a lot of input from a lot of people. Yeah. What about setbacks? I mean, if, if, I, if I get my entitlement, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, years ago, yeah. and it was a little wee, little wee setback, a little mm -hmm. narrow one-panel mm -hmm. sidewalk, mm -hmm. um, and the people come, um, and, and the professionals come, and they say, wait, you know, if you want to have live, work, learn, and play, if you want to have open spaces mm -hmm. and build a neighborhood that, that can breathe, mm -hmm. you need sidewalks four times that width. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? Entitlement. Well, yeah, I mean... Again, it's actually, the situation is almost the reverse of what you're thinking. The old suburban model was set everything back, put in a bunch of landscaping, build a big wall. So that's what you're seeing, this latest project announced by Kamehameha Schools. Mm -hmm. In fact, what we would rather see is less setback and commercial buildings right close to the street, and no close wall. to the sidewalk. Sure, so because you can go inside. Again, what is your our model? They keep claiming their model is Chinatown and and the Marin Building that was built there. That thing is in line with all the old buildings that were in Chinatown. It makes a it makes a great strolling environment because you're walking along the street, and then there's some more shops right there. So so ironically, a better environment in this case is decrease the setback, but put in but, but put in low-rise uh, commercial commercial space because that's what makes a neighborhood feel homey. You, well, I, let, me, let me offer this thought. I mean, we just went to a place called Kelowna. Mm -hmm. Kelowna's in British Columbia. Mm. And I was thinking yeah, of that there. as I described, you mm -hmm. know, the, 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 the easy model. And the oh, model. yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, it has both. It has shops in every direction on the side streets as well as the main streets. Mm -hmm. And it also has wide si sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Both. Okay. So, you know, and with benches. We can sit down. We can well, sit down. <laughs> that's great. No, I, I would agree. You know, wide sidewalks on the face of it are a great thing as long as they have shade. In in Hawaii, we, we have everywhere. to have shade. Yeah. But, yeah, the wide sidewalks are good. It's, uh, it, it, you know, when you get a wide sidewalk and you still have your street, you end up, you know, with a very wide sort of building-to-building -building distance. And then you start losing the neighborhood quality, a yeah. kind of a cozy. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's a there's a balance there. Right. But uh, right, it can be too far. And, but it, and ironically, can't. what we're fighting in Kakako is the suburban model thinking that has led to these standalone islands where you know there's there's a bunch of nice landscaping around the base to make it look so-called pretty. But it, of course, if you're walking by, it's you're, there's nothing of interest. You know, you're just out there in the hot sun looking at some plants, and you're thinking, how 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 fast can I get through this block? Because I sure don't feel welcome here. Right, and you get tired. Yeah, don't you? I mean, I yeah. do. I, I, it's not interesting, and I just mm -hmm. want to go to the next and, place. And and so, and what do those residents do in that in that their unit? They when they come down from the elevator, they're just going to climb in their car and drive out. And we've we've missed our opportunity. Speaking of which, and this also goes to your points about the setback, which I'm coming around to thinking yeah, about that. Yeah, tricky. Um, it's a city of, called Bone, B-E-A-U-N-E, -E, Bone, mm -hmm. in, uh, in France? south of France. Yeah. And um, it's really a beauty. Mm -hmm. And the, the streets are probably wide enough for one car, you know, at right. one direction. Um, and it's been like that for a long time. And the, they, they have parking lots around the perimeter of Bone. Mm -hmm. I mean, in every direction, but mm -hmm. not inside. Yeah. So Bone is very concentrated, intense shopping, walks, little parks and mm -hmm. plazas and all this great, you know, s f south of France architecture and all that. Um, you say, gee, you know, that allows for a certain engagement with the city. You become part of the city. It owns you, you own it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're in a relationship now. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take the cars out of it. 
can. And they and they have done that. It's not the only place in France that's like that. Uh, so query, we have now big parking lot things going on. Mm -hmm. we, we're going to be well prepared for lots of cars. Yeah. And those cars are going to be well congested in lots of streets, mm -hmm. which is supposed to be for walking and bike riding. And yeah. I, you know, I really wonder how that's going to work. What, what's the architectural concept involved? Uh, is bone right? Uh, how, do you yeah. deal, how do you deal with this problem? Yeah. Well, again, with a lot of those medieval cities in Europe, um, of course, you, you, you want people to come visit but they can't all drive in those little one, one of those narrow streets. So they're absolutely got it right. You put, you put perimeter parking lots for all these people coming in from elsewhere. They, and then they have to just get out and walk. And, and it's lovely. Everybody's on foot. It's quiet. There's a few, you know, motorbikes and small cars from the residents. But it works. And I've seen that. And, and uh, that was a model that was actually proposed for Waikiki about 30 years ago. Uh, they were going to make Waikiki really pedestrian. I remember. Put some big, big perimeter lots on the Malka side. Let the locals, so that the locals would use Waikiki. Our problem as locals, we know, is that Waikiki parking is a nightmare. And half the time we say, well, should we go to Waikiki? Ah, no, nah, maybe not. We'll go somewhere else. And so we don't mingle as much. You know, the, you know, I think people who, who uh, the young people, they still love Waikiki because it's. It's exciting at night. It's got tons of people on the street. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful walking environment. You, you can get people there. watching. Yeah, the the tourists love it. You know, the Asian tourists especially, they feel right at home. This is a kind of lively yeah. nightlife they love. And and we could have a similar toned down version of that in Kakaako. And and uh, my my biggest fear is is that all of these big luxury towers are building all of these. They're spending millions of dollars on these huge parking garages, and the people are really not going to use it. They won't be here. They won't. They're not here. They're going to have maybe one car. But if we do this right, if we do this according to the vision, they're not going to use their car that much. They're going to be walking. So it's waste. So it's wasted. So we've inflated the price of all of the housing in Kakako because we put in so much parking, and then it's going to get unused. So we have way overbuilt it. And and that's directly affected the affordability of Kakako. So you know, Peter Apo was at this table one time, and he kept pronouncing it Kakako, Kakako, Kakako. So Kakako, the place that says no, Kakako. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scott Wilson, uh, <laughs> an architect and uh, the chair of the Urban Design Committee, the AIA Honolulu, catching up on Kakako today, talking about the architectural principles in play and the planning principles in play for the public spaces in Kakaako. We'll be right back after this short break. Aloha, my name is Willow Chang Alion and I host a show called The Art of Life. We air live every Friday from 2 to 3 p.m. and what we do is basically we focus on individuals who create a unique sense of place for Hawaii. These are movers and shakers, artists, innovators, they are also traditionalists, they're all involved in the archival process, and they make this place a unique place, one that makes Hawaii a richer place to be. I hope you do join us, and certainly tell your friends about the show, whether they live here or they live abroad. It's a way to give back to our community. We're keeping it pono. Okay, we're back, we're live. We're here with Scott Wilson, architect, chair of the Urban Design Committee, of the uh, AIA Honolulu and um, you know an increasingly important body really because they are the professionals they know about architecture they know about planning and we are all sort of sitting around in this huge area mm. that is getting built one way or the other and question is you know are, are we all having are we all integrating these planning concepts and architectural concepts into the area and, and the answer is really mixed bag so you, you were saying that the AIA committee is meeting on this, is considering various things. Uh, what kinds of things could it consider and what kinds of things could it do? Well, we, we are trying to be a, a, a discussion point, a community design center, so to speak, a, 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 a point where professionals and the, and the concerned public can come together and make sure we're talking about the really key issues. You know, we. If we sit here and get bogged down on homelessness, or we get bogged down on sewer capacity, we are missing the boat. Because meanwhile, the, the developers are, are churning out new projects, and, and, 
and we've said nothing about how what's the final look of those projects what's going to happen on the street you know we get uh, I wanted to mention even uh, building heights because building heights was something that just got a lot of heat and and uh, fury when when uh, the governor announced the 650 foot building 690 it just went it sent people into spasms and and in one sense it was important that they did react because it was he was blowing through the old height limit which is maybe 400 feet and he was going up almost you know three quarters more than that and that was to do that without any concern for the overall uh, skyline overall uh, studies of, of, of views and impacts was a little bit irresponsible but um, that he's re he's retracted that as we know so um, but what I'd like to say is, is that when you're walking on the street, when you're looking up at those towers, whether they're 350 feet or 400 feet, is really not uh, making a big difference to you. Uh, and, and even to views from around the city. A, a, a tower is a tower. Uh, I think we, we need to refocus on the street level because that's where you're walking. That's, if you want to talk about neighborhood, it happens at the street level. It doesn't happen at 400 feet. Those towers are going to be typically they're within a bigger block there's a big sort of a podium of the, that sits on the street and the tower is in the center and it goes up and then you've got a pool deck or some kind of recreation standard deck. recipe yeah, yeah it's a it's a kind of a standard model yeah. so but, so as you can see you know it's really what happens at the street level well and what happens at the street level is def defined largely um, by by the architecture the design of the buildings themselves mm -hmm. over which you don't have that much you the you know urban design committee the AI don't have no much we we don't and, and so you know what really counts I mean it's, it's like it's like in the world today what really counts is the law what's written down yeah you know the way it's gone through the established process and these buildings have they've gone through many of them and many more will mm -hmm. gone through the existing established process mm -hmm. at the end of the day when they get that stamp of approval by whatever agencies are involved mm -hmm. that's the law that's what they are entitled to do yeah. that's what they're going to do and what I think and what even what you think you know mm -hmm. you know a lot more about mm -hmm. um, may not really be very relevant then you go to these um, renderings that mm -hmm. I think are you know, so influential on people. Yeah. And uh, you had some of these renderings at the AIA Vision Committee meeting, as, as I right. remember. We, and it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where it came from, probably from developers, but mm -hmm. uh, so you have a street with, with trees, promenade street. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a street with sidewalks that, that blend into the roadway. Mm -hmm. So the, the whole thing is one great big walking area mm -hmm. and bike lanes and turns interesting turns and oh, all this. Oh, you're talking about the village green. The yeah. village green. There was a beautiful rendering beautiful. And, and and I believe that that will get built. Well, that that was a one that's, that's not necessarily gone through the process and received the imprimatur mm -hmm. of the legal process with a with a stamp of approval where somebody can make that happen. And that's mm -hmm. that's my question. Mm -hmm. If we see mm -hmm. these beautiful renderings I mean really mm -hmm. enticing mm -hmm. I want to be there I want to spend my whole day there mm -hmm. but can I can anyone force that to happen mm -hmm. well we, we we do have to ask which rendering when you were talking about now <laughs> the one that I think you're talking about was actually a private property in the center of the Howard Hughes village ward village concept Maybe because so. there are these nice winding paths there's lots of palm trees there's open space, there's towers on either side. I think it was. So that's like saying, okay, Aulani, Disneyland, uh, Disney Aulani, uh, the center of that with all of its pools and things, uh, that looks beautiful. It got built, it is still beautiful, but that is not the same as when you walk out to this, the roadway in Koalina. I mean, th that doesn't guarantee that the roadway in Koalina is going to be beautiful or interesting. So, so I, I think you've got to make sure you're discussing public spaces versus private spaces. Good now, point. That, that I believe the, the rendering you were talking about was actually a private space. It looked like a public space, but in fact, they, it's totally under their control. Because, I think it changed their minds about it. So what you need to look at are the renderings of streets. Now, like, as I said, I saw one rendering recently of a brand new project on Ala Moana, and I could see 
these 50-foot high walls on three sides. And that's what got me alarmed because I realized, man, we are, we are just basically doing what we did back at the Ala Moana end, you know, with the Hokua and the, the Nauru Tower. Uh, how many times have you decided you wanted to walk into the Nauru Tower as you're walking along Ala Moana no, Boulevard? It's forbidden. Forbidden it. Yeah. It's like, yike, 50-foot tower, and, you know, and there's, there's one small door for the residents, and that's it. Right? There's there's no interest in the public. Yeah. So it's, it's like a hole in the Let's not of the duplicate city. that. That was a mistake. It was built on the old um, uh, LUO, uh, which is the zoning plan for the rest of our city. Yeah. So it. Uh, it not city, not, it's not HCDA, right? Well, until, you know, 2005, um, HCDA worked on a, with a planning code that was very similar to the rest of the city. And, and you could build these gated communities basically there's there's no interest in an urban neighborhood there hasn't been since the war since world war ii mm -hmm. so this is this is in a way I'm, I'm making a critique about a planning for our whole city because basically we're suburbanizing our whole city because we've got outmoded zoning code um, the only really relevant code right now is the one in Kakako, and and the problem is, is that, as I said, many projects have been grandfathered from 2005. And then the other problem is that many projects are given variances. There's, you know, uh, there were about 12 variances given on the 801 South Street. It's a moving target. Yeah. And it's hard for any one man, woman, or, or organization to hold it to mm -hmm. where we thought it was going to be. But we're but governed we by rules. Talking. We we're governed by talking. rules. Yeah. And maybe something will come of it, and I certainly look forward to our next discussion, Scott, okay. about what happens at these meetings, what mm -hmm. the public says, what the professionals uh, say. Scott okay. Wilson, chair of the Urban Design Committee and president-elect of the AIA Honolulu. We are catching up on Kaka'ako today. We're talking about uh, the um, uh, architectural concepts in play in developing the public spaces in Kaka'ako. I'm Jay Fidel. I've learned a lot. We'll be back with more. Aloha.